on Authentic Ag, we talk with Kansas dairy farmer Justin Oldie from Lynn. We wanted you to hear what's going on in our state from someone that's living it every day. We'll also have features from Kansas corn, Kansas wheat, as well as our weekly updates from the Kansas Livestock Association, Paragon Ag Advisors. Brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers, Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org, and the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat, online at kswheat.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks real people just like you and me and we're waiting on you to join us so for fun adventure fuel up fuel your body and let's have some fun In agriculture news from agview.net, producers signed a record 1.77 million contracts for USDA's ag risk coverage and price loss coverage programs for the 2019 crop year. That's more than 107% of the total contracts signed compared to the five-year average. USDA also reminds producers June 30th is the deadline to enroll in ARC and PLC for the 2020 crop year and make that one-time update to PLC payment yields by September 30th. FSA attributes a significant participation in the 2019 crop year of ALC and PLC to increase producer interest in the programs under the 2018 Farm Bill and an increase in eligible farms because of the selling and buying of farms and new opportunities for beginning farmers and military veterans with farms having 10 or fewer base acres. Enrollment for 2019 ended on March the 16th. I want to remind you, USDA service centers like FSA County offices are open for business by phone only. Now, the field work will continue with appropriate social distancing. Now, while program delivery staff will continue to come into the office, they'll be working with producers by phone and using online tools whenever possible. All service center visitors wishing to conduct business with the FSA, Natural Resource Conservation Service, or any other service center agency are required to call that service center and schedule a phone appointment. Well, the Kansas City Federal Reserve Bank reports a slowdown of farm lending in the first quarter of the year before the emergence of the global economic developments related to COVID-19. Growth in farm lending continued to show signs of slowing. Now, according to data collected early in February, agricultural lending activity showed further signs of slowing in the first quarter uh, despite an increase in the volume of operating loans. The total volume of non-real estate loans remained above the historic average, but were about 10% lower than a year ago. Despite a decline in most types of lending, loans for operating expenses increased nearly 10%. The overall decline was driven by a drop of about 30% in both livestock loans and loans for miscellaneous purposes. KC Fed says demand for farm loans may increase as economic disruptions associated with the COVID-19 pandemic could put additional pressure on farm finances. More on these and other stories at agview.net. Stay with us as we talk Kansas dairy when we return. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. 
At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Supply. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Earlier in my life, I rode bucking horses and rodeos. And my shoulders took such a beating. And that was probably the reason for having several previous surgeries on both shoulders. About a year ago, I decided that I didn't want to have another surgery. And so I contacted Kansas Regenerative Medicine, took their treatment process. It was relatively pain-free. Now, after eight months, my shoulders have healed to the point where I think I'm probably 90 to 95% of normal. It takes a couple of months to start to see results and feel real progress. That continued to increase gradually until now at approximately eight months, and I'm extremely pleased. I've got full range of motion. I can lift weights, I can throw, I can do uh, a lot of things that uh, I couldn't do without a lot of pain previously. So I'm, I'm tickled to death with the results and I'd recommend this process to anyone. And joining us this week is uh, Justin Oldie, who is a, a dairy farmer, Oldie Dairy, uh, in the uh, Lynn, Kansas area. And uh, Justin, thanks, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, as we uh, look about what's going on with the situation that um, you know, we're all still trying to deal with, one industry that's been hit particularly hard in agriculture is the dairy sector. So I uh, wanted to bring you on because your operation has done maybe something you've been very proactive in helping tell the story, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But uh, let's kind of give us uh, the, your take on how things are uh, with Kansas dairy farmers and the Kansas dairy industry right now. Well, things in the industry are tough. We're like probably everybody else, I and mean, we're just trying to figure out what happens, um, you know, what's going to happen next. <clears throat> We, uh, some of the challenges that we face are we're making milk every single day. The milk has to have a home and that home has to be either consumed directly or made into products such as cheese, powder, butter, so on and so forth. And the economy was pretty well just completely hit a wall. And, you know, we're just trying to reroute, re, uh, reevaluate and see see what where we're at today and what where you think we'll be at here in three months six months down the road so the situation isn't that there isn't enough milk it's it's a way to get it off your farm to process then into say the grocery stores now 
Yeah, there's there's uh, challenges the whole way along the supply chain. We, we, we certainly have it. Then you've got to get it to the plants. And then the plants, I know they're running into a few issues of some COVID cases. You know, everybody's looking out for, for safety first for everyone in this situation. But it's, you, you turn on a demand spigot that wasn't there, wasn't there to this degree, you know, literally overnight. You had you know, plants geared up to go to restaurants, go to different things like that. Now all of a sudden you're trying to go homes and everybody's just trying to figure out the, the logistics of everything. Uh, the federal government uh, had other programs in place. So, so far, some assistance programs haven't gone to dairy. Uh, others are saying dairy needs a, a little more uh, push. Do you think there'll be uh, something there beyond the, the programs that, uh, that are already in place? I think it's probably a wait and see. Purdue announced Friday, I think it was Friday, you know, some things they wanted to do for the dairy industry. You know, personally, I'd like to see most of those funds, if not all of them, go to buy our products and give them to people that have lost their jobs. Uh, you know, that way he keeps the dairy going, he keeps the plants going, and you help some people out that are uh, unfortunately having a really tough time just all of a sudden. Our guest this week is Justin Oldie, who is a dairy farmer from the Lynn area. Let's take a break. When we come back, we will talk about some of the proactive things that uh, their dairy and others are doing to help tell the story. We'll be back in just a moment. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. And our guest this week is Justin Oldie, who is a dairy farmer from the uh, Lynn area. And uh, Justin, the, one of the things that I noticed really on social media here a few weeks ago is as this situation continued to evolve and people had a lot of concerns about the food supply, but also wanting to know more about the safety and where their food comes from. And, and your dairy and, and others were some of the leaders in really using tools like video and social media uh, to help get the story out. Kind of tell us how that developed and, and what you're doing to, to help tell that story. Well, we've always felt that we should try to show people what we're doing, you know, how, how cows are milked, the whole nine yards. I mean, even though we're in a very small community, it's dairy has become a smaller and smaller industry. So we've always tried to show people what it's all about, what we do. There's a gal in our office, Ashley, she's fantastic. And she was fielding, fielding a fair amount of questions of why can't we get milk in the stores and why can't we do this and that. So she, uh, it's her idea to, to put us on and uh, you know try to explain a few things that are happening in the industry. Um, you know, I did the marketing piece and then my brother and, and uh, Darren, a herdsman, I know they did some more of the, the cow side, looking at the actual dairy uh, part of it. Well, and other, dairies have also stepped up and done virtual tours or opened it up. You know, where a lot of folks are uh, uh, helping their kids at home with school and really giving an opportunity because I think a lot of times uh, uh, maybe some of our city folks think that, you know, ice cream and milk and cheese just comes from the grocery store. Yeah, and we wanted to make the point too that it with everything going on, we're still doing doing what we can do, and the food supply is safe, and there's no no issues on farm. And yeah, that was something else was brought up. I mean, I've got a I've got a four year old that's starting to do preschool online or you know YouTube a couple times a week, thanks to thanks to her teacher. And we just said, hey, just see if anybody's interested and where it goes. Well, you, those are great opportunities and outreach, and I think we're seeing more and more of agriculture trying to step in and you know, make that connection with folks as uh, we maybe get this chance to uh, kind of reset things. But uh, uh, talking about that, Justin, 
let's look at the uh, the future of the of the industry the way you see it. Once things somewhat settle back down and we are we are in another new normal, uh, where do you think uh, dairy is heading in, in places like uh, like Kansas and and this part of the Great Plains region? A couple of things I do know is that milk is a nutritious product. We've got you know for for what you actually pay for you know as far as how whatever metric you want to use you know calcium protein all that kind of stuff is in there it's it's a it's an economical option for everybody i think kansas is in a in a good spot to grow we've got you know arid areas we have a, we have a lot of positives here we're in, are in the middle of the country so we can ship you know even a support in the gulf or, or somewhere like that you know we're not too far too far from anything yeah, what that looks like going forward, it's it's you know that's pretty tough. I mean, it's we're not going to get that restaurant traffic back right away. Um, how much of it will we get back? What is it going to look like? How long is that going to take? I know after nine eleven, it took three years for the the airplane industry to get back to where it was. I don't know why the restaurant industry wouldn't be, you know, something along those lines. Right. And I would imagine you're going to have more people working from home, um, less time in the offices downtown. So how does, how does that change? Do you have restaurants kind of par uh, perking up on the outskirts of town? Do you have more at home meals? Um, yeah, there's, there's just a lot of, a lot of angles and a lot of different things that, that, uh, this, this thing can go. But I know at the end of the day, we can do a good job. We can, we can make a good product for everybody. Well, Justin, we sure appreciate uh, you taking time uh, out of your schedule. You've got a busy day every day, and uh, we wish you and Kansas Dairy Farmers success as we go through this. It is a tough road, and uh, and thanks for what you do in support of uh, of all of us. And of course, we want to encourage folks: uh, drink milk, uh, eat cheese, and maybe have that second bowl of ice cream. All right, Justin Oldie, who is a dairy farmer. Uh, from the Lynn, Kansas area has been our special guest uh, this week. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Hi, this is Sharon Thielen. I am the Director of Education for the Kansas Corn Commission. And I'm just going to visit a little bit about our continuous learning efforts um, that the Kansas Corn Commission is putting out right now. So we all know in the state of Kansas and, and nationwide, there's been a stay at home order. So people are starting um, to try to figure out how are they going to educate their kids at home. In Kansas, um, you know, they've been ahead of the curve and they made that announcement early. Um, and so parents and teachers have been working together to try to figure out how are we going to keep educating our kids um, until the end of the school year. In our Kansas Corn STEM program, um, we decided we want to play a, an important part in that effort. And we brought our group of teachers together that normally writes lessons for us. We had 16 teachers come to the table and threw out lots of ideas on how we can adjust the lessons that we currently have, but also create new ones that use products that you can find in your home um, to do these hands-on activities, but also written in a way that parents can understand how to do those activities. And so every day for the last two weeks, we have been rolling out a new featured lesson every day on Facebook and on our website, kansascornstem.com, all spelled out. Um, go to our lesson library and you can check out all of those continuous learning lessons that are going to be added every single day uh, from now until the end of the school year. 
Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Over the past few weeks, farmers have taken major hits, not only financially, but also when it comes to the weather. Recent cold temperatures have potential to cause freeze injury to the 2020 wheat crop. Factors to watch out for include growth stage of the crop, air and soil temperature, duration of cold temperatures, and snow cover. If the growing point is already above ground, the first joint is visible, Wheat can sustain temperatures down to about 24 degrees for a few hours. Minimum temperatures below 24 degrees for extended periods of time increase the risk of crop injury. Along with watching your wheat during the changing weather, it's also important to scout wheat for stripe and leaf rust. There were a few reports of stripe rust from Oklahoma and a Twitter report of the disease in southeast Kansas bordering Missouri. To date, extension agents, crop consultants, and growers all indicate that rust is not widely active in Kansas. When people think of stripe rust, they often visualize the characteristic bright yellowish-orange lesions on adult plants. Symptoms of stripe rust on younger leaves are often less rectangular because the fungal growth within the plant is not limited by the veins of younger leaves. With the wheat crop in South Central and Southeast Kansas approaching or already at the flag leaf emergence stages of growth, farmers are encouraged to be on the lookout for diseases. More infield observations will be happening over the next few weeks. Visit kswheat.com to learn more. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years, and we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. The Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act has allocated significant resources to the Small Business Administration to help small businesses survive and keep workers employed amid the pandemic and economic downturn. Traditionally, agricultural producers have not qualified for a majority of Small Business Administration programs. However, due to the diligent work of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, the eligibility criteria was broadened in the CARES Act to include agriculture. One program that may be of interest to livestock producers is the Paycheck Protection Program that provides small businesses, those with less than 500 employees, with funds to pay up to eight weeks of payroll costs, including benefits. Loans of up to $10 million will be made available to cover two and a half times the average monthly cost of payroll. These include salaries, employee benefits, including health care and retirement, mortgage interest payments, but not prepayments or principal payments, rent, utilities, and interest payments on any other debt obligations that were incurred before February 15th of 2020. At least 75% of the loan must be used for payroll cost. The Paycheck Protection Program is retroactive to February 15th of 2020 and loans will be available through June 30th of this year. While the program is open until the end of June, loans will be available on a first come, first served basis. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet, Valley Vet, Valley Vet Supply. 
Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Good morning. Zach Cotot here with Paragon Ag, a division of Keiko Isom. Another week of more corona has come and gone, and it's continuing to take no prisoners in the commodity markets. The dairy industry and livestock sector are taking the brunt of it with schools and restaurants closed. The consumer demand is now pivoting to the grocery space. This change in buying happened almost with the flip of a switch, causing a supply chain bottleneck. I don't need to tell you this, but if you've been to a grocery store over the last 30 days, it's evident that the demand is there, as shelf stockers can't keep up. You would think with this type of buying that the cattle and hog markets would be racing to the upside, but in reality, we're seeing the opposite. It makes a guy scratch his head. What's going on is we are seeing packing plants either shutting down production completely or slowing down the chain speeds in order to maintain the proper social distance, both with the goal to slow the spread of COVID. So, at the end of the day, we're not killing the same number of head that we normally see. The demand for the finished product is clearly there. We have this glut of live animals on the supply side, but we have this disconnect between the two, as processing isn't keeping the pace it should. With everything going on, this goes to show, not only in the livestock, but in grains and other commodities, that the market doesn't care what your cost per acre or cost of gain is, it will act irrational long after you or I are solvent. Over the last five years, and especially the last 12 months, being proactive in your marketing has put you in a better spot, so you don't have to react when the market backs you into a corner. It's not too late to have that conversation. Even when everything looks the darkest, dawn may be around the corner. If you have questions, or would like an idea or two for 2020, give us a call here at Paragon Ag Advisors at 888-452-8751. I'm Zach Otop. Have a great day. Well, that's this week's Authentic Ag. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please email me, kenrogers at gmail.com. Wash your hands, check in on your neighbor, and be kind to folks. We'll get through this whole thing together. I'm Ken Rogers. We'll see you next time on Authentic Ag. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you.